Okay, let's continue to part two for moment of inertia. In this case, let's go to see parallel and perpendicular axis theorems. Okay, um, we know that when we have a, a object, right, moving in secret path. Imagine this is the object right here, right? It takes this this shape, right? It's connected to this position right here. Right, and then it moves around. Later, there's gonna be this object right here, right? In this way, imagine. Okay, later, there's gonna be right here, correct? Correct, imagine it's connected in this way, and later, there's gonna be uh, right here. Right, as uh, you can see, uh, this is the center mass of the object. So, the center mass is rotating to this x rotation, but at the same time, the object itself is rotating through its center of mass, right? Imagine this is the object right here, right? This is the stopper, imagine. So uh, this instant is right here, and then it's right here, right, right here, and right here. But at the same time, right, this, the center of mass uh, rotates through one axis of rotation, right? Its center of mass rotates to itself, right, in this way, right? It moves in this way, it goes in this way, right? It's rotating, right? To its center of mass. So we have two types of rotations, correct? Now, when we are going to the um, um, rotational kinetic energy, right? The torque kinetic energy, right? Kinetic energy is equals to, right? Uh, linear kinetic energy, right? Plus rotational kinetic energy, correct? And what should be the torque energy? Then it's going to be one half mv square plus one half moment of inertia times omega square right one more time we want to relate these two quantities because we're dealing with rotational uh, cases and we know the relationship between these two quantities linear angular quantities in this way so that means r times omega right when we substitute this value uh, right here this one right here what do we have one half m times r omega square right um, plus one half moment of inertia, right, through the center of mass, through the center of mass, right, through the center of mass, we just calculated in the previous video, right, times omega square. Okay, wait. Now, um, from here, we have that this torque energy is equals to, to uh, one half, right, m, Right, R square omega square plus one half moment of inertia, CM, right, omega square. Right, now, um, if they have the same, right, angular velocity, actually they have the same angular velocity, correct? This takes this form, right, it's gonna be one half, right, times um, M in the torque mass R square plus a moment of inertia through the center of mass omega square. Correct. Now this is the total moment of inertia of this object moving in circular path. Correct. So this becomes then equals to one half the total moment of inertia right uh, times omega square. Correct. This quantity is called the parallel axis theorem, right? Because, because um, this is the axis rotation, right, of the uh, object, and this is, right, the um, axis rotation through the center mass of the object itself, right, in this way. So these two axes are parallel, right? When these two axes are parallel, right, it's moving, right, the, the rotation moving parallel to this, uh, um, the, uh, the object moving is moving right around this axis rotation, but all the time these two are parallel, right? So we call this the parallel axis theorem. Okay, so this is coming in this way. Let's do it right here. So the total moment of inertia is equal to the moment of inertia to the center of mass plus, right? Uh, usually instead of R, right, we call this distance from here to here D usually. So plus what? Mass times d squared. Right? Again, this is called the parallel axis theorem. And let's do some examples, right, to apply this theorem. For example, we found before, in the previous video, right, we found that, that 
um, when we have when we have a um, a rod right right here. We have a rod before, right? We did it before, right? Uh, um, we're looking the we're looking for the um, um, moment of inertia to its center of mass, correct? Like this, and uh, we found right that the moment of inertia to the center of mass is equals to to um, to mass right l squared over twelve. We did it in the previous previous video. Okay. Um, now what happens if we are looking for the solar mass correct through this um, um, for the moment of inertia we're looking for the moment of inertia through this uh, point right this h like this correct now this will be rotates now let's do the same thing as we did before right let's take an elemental mass right here right this is my dm remember we're looking for moment of inertia to this extra rotation, right? It's equals to integral of r squared correct dm. One more time, I'm looking for this element of mass in this absolid, right? So this is my element of mass, correct? It behaves, this element behaves a particle, right? Rotating, right? So this extra rotation, so it has a, a radius for that particle, right? And because it's a solid, remember we use a densities. In this case, I'm gonna be linear density equals to mass over length, right? This is the length L, correct? Um, also, because uh, this quantity is constant, we can take this uh, this uh, ratio to dm over the, um, let's call this a uh, direction x, right? dx, correct? And from here we have that dm is equals to m over L, right? dx. Now let's go back to the original equation and plug this value right here. Okay, let's do it. So it equals two, in the world of r square in this case because we're changing right the the uh, variable to x so let's use x for simplicity okay x squared times dm but dm is m right over l correct dx now the limit the limit of this solid it goes from zero to l right from zero to l perfect so should be the inner word then is equals to um, n over L, right, um, x, x, what, x cubed over 3, right, from 0 to L. And this is equals to m over L, right, L cubed over 3. Correct? Over 3. Okay, perfect. And then this is equals to, what is the value of, well, it's right here already, right? It's going to be m L the square over 3. Okay. Now, let's use the par parallel axis theorem to prove this one. This case, this one right here. Okay, let's do it. So we found in using this technique, right, that the moment of inertia, right, the moment of inertia, right, for this rod, right, through this uh, axis of uh, rotation is gonna be equals to m l squared divided by 3. Okay, now let's see if we can create the same result when we use the parallel axis theorem. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. So the parallel axis theorem says, right, that the total moment of inertia is equal to moment of inertia through the center of mass, right, plus, right, mass times d squared. Okay, great, let's do it. So we have, right, that this is the center of mass, and we found, right, that the moment of inertia to this center of mass, right, is equals to this quantity right here, correct? Now, what should be the moment of inertia, right, when the extra rotation is, right, uh, to this point, right? And we found, you see another technique, right, which is this one. Now, let's use the parallelogram, uh, uh, parallel, right, um, x is theorem to find the same result. Okay, let's do it. So according to this, the moment of inertia is equal to um, um, moment of the center of mass plus mass, right, d, right, d square. But what should be d in this case? d is the distance from the extra rotation to the center of mass, right, it's my d. And d is equal to, and this is l, right, this is l, is gonna be l divided by two. 
correct? Perfect. Now, let's do it. So this is equals to, what should be the uh, um, moment of inertia to the center of mass? Well, we found this m, m, right? m, l squared, right, divided by 12 plus m times d squared. But what is this? l divided by 2, right? l divided by 2 squared. Perfect. Now, let's do it. So this is equals to, this equals to, again, um, what do we have? Equals to m, m, right, l square, correct, divided by 4, right, times what? Times, divided by 4, mm, okay, okay, we can just divide it by 4 times what? This is going to be 1 third, right, plus 1. Correct? Okay, we can do different ways. Let's do it this way. So, what is this inside? It's gonna be what? Um, four thirds, right? Four thirds is equals to, when we do the calculus, equals to what? M L squared divided by four. And what do we have inside? Inside we have what? Four thirds, right? Four thirds. And what is this? It's equals to uh, M uh, L squared divided by three. Right, so the moment of inertia is equals to m l squared divided by 3, which is the same as this one. Got it? So the answer is the same. So this is one of the ways how we uh, use this parallel axis, axis theorem. Right? Um, we have more examples for this theorem. Right? We have, let's say, um, a cylinder, right? A cylinder, right? Moving or rotating through this axis of rotation, right? In this way. How we can find then the uh, moment of inertia? Well, we use the parallel axis theorem. Why? Because we already found that um, when the um, axis of rotation is, right, through a certain mass in this way, right? We found that the moment of inertia for a cylinder right, through a central mass is equal to m uh, r squared divided by 2. Correct? Now, uh, this axis to a central mass is parallel to this axis, right? So we can use the parallel axis theorem to calculate right, the moment of inertia of this cylinder moving around this axis of rotation in this way. Okay, let's do it. What should be the moment of inertia? Again, it's right here. It's equals to moment of inertia to the center of mass plus mass d squared. What should be d in this picture? d is the distance from the axis of rotation to the center of mass, right? Which is this one right here, right? This is my d. Perfect. Now let's substitute this value right there and solve for the total moment of inertia. Let's do it. This is equals to m. Um, R squared divided by 2 plus m, right? Just what? R squared, because this d is going to be the same as r, right? The same as r, the radius. Great. So, what should be then the moment of inertia for um, this uh, cylinder? What well, is going to be 3 halves, right? 3 halves m r squared. Correct? And the same way we can use. Um, the, um, we can use this theorem if we have, let's say, a sphere, right, right that rotates to this extra rotation. Once we know, right, the moment of inertia to the center of mass, right, we use this theorem. Got it? Okay, perfect. Now let's go to the next one, the perpendicular axis theorem. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. We use that, that, that theorem when we have a surface, right? When we have an, an area, we are looking for an exit which is perpendicular to that area. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, um, for example, um, we found already, we found already, uh, let's create first the formula. Let's create the empty question. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Imagine that we have this plane, right? This plane x and y, right? We have this plane x and y, and we have this axis which is perpendicular, of course, to uh, x and y, right? X and y, perfect. Okay, now let's take a particle right here. 
the particle, right? And this particle is at this distance from the y axis, my x, right? And at this distance from the x direction, which is gonna be my y, right? Correct? And from here, right, from z, this is r, right? Let's call it r. Perfect. Now, what happens when this particle, right, is rotating through the uh, y axis, right, in this way? What should be the moment of inertia? Well, as we know, the moment of inertia through y is equal to m times this distance, right? But that distance is x, right? x. What about if the particle now rotates right through the x-axis? Okay, so in this case, we have that the moment of inertia through x is equals to m times y, correct? Perfect. Now, uh, what happens if the particle now rotates on this plane, x, y? Right? Okay, so means that it's at our distance from the z-axis, right? So we have that the moment of inertia um, through z is equals to m, but it's r square, right? Square, square, r square, correct? Okay, great. But let's see from this figure, r square is equals to what? x square plus y square. When we substitute this value right here, what do we have? We have that moment of inertia through z axis is equal to mass times x squared plus y squared. And what is this? This is equal to m x squared plus m y squared. But what are, are those? These are just these two quantities, right? So at the end, what do we have? That moment of inertia through z is equal to moment of inertia um, through x plus plus moment of inertia, right, through y, right? And this is called the perpendicular axis theorem. Let's see how we can apply this theorem. Let's do two examples. Um, we know already the moment of inertia of a disk, correct? We found that the moment of inertia of a disk, a disk is the same as the moment of inertia of a cylinder, right? We have a disk right here, right? The moment of, uh, moment of inertia to the center of mass, right? Is found to be to the center of mass equals to um, m, right? R squared divided by two for a disk. Okay, what about what about if we want to to know, right? The moment of inertia, right? Of this. Uh, this now in this way, right? Let's call this x, right? Or in this way, right? Y, right? In this way or this way? How we can calculate that moment of inertia? Well, we can use the perpendicular axis theorem, which is this one, right? This uh, moment of inertia actually is through z, right? This is z and this is the plane x, y, right? x, y axis, correct? So through z is m r squared divided by 2. Now what should be through x and through y? Well, by um, symmetry, these two are the same in this way or in this way, right? By symmetry, they're the same. Means what? That for this uh, disk, why is the disk, right? We have a um, moment of inertia through x is equal to moment of inertia through y, right? Correct. When we apply this condition to the original equation for perpendicular axis theorem, we can see that this um, moment of inertia to z, right, perpendicular to this plane, right, is equal to twice, right, the moment of inertia through x, or right, twice through y, in this way. Correct. But this is given already. This found. This found right from before, and then we can conclude right that the moment of inertia through x, right, x-axis, right, in this way, is equal to, right, uh, moment of inertia through z divided by 2, which is equal to, right, moment of inertia, right, uh, equals to mass, right, r squared divided by, by what? By 4, correct? Perfect. So this is one way how can I apply right the perpendicular axis theorem. Right? Okay. This is the case when we know z and we're looking for x and y. 
what happens if we are going in a positive direction, right? We need to know, if we, we know for this and this, we can calculate Z. Okay, let's do it, let's do it. Perfect. Again, this is for X and Y because they're the same, right? For the disc. Okay, now let's go for another example. Yes, okay. Let's do it, let's do it. Imagine that we have this surface, right? This area like this, right? And this uh, is rotating right to the center mass in this way, right? Or in this way, right? Imagine that we level this um, distance, right? A or yeah, we level A, right? And this distance, right? B, correct? Now let's use a technique that we used before, right? To calculate the moment of inertia. For this, because it's a surface, we need an element of area, right? Because remember we have, we have um, the formula, right? Moment of inertia is equal to integral r squared, right? Dm. So we're looking for these quantities. We're looking for the element of mass and then the distance, right? Uh, from the rotation to element of mass. For example, uh, let's take this, the element of mass right here, right, imagine. Okay, this element of mass. And now the distance is from here to here, the distance R, we can label it R or we can label it X, Y. Okay, let's label X, right, okay, it's R. Same thing, right? And then this is my DM, right, DM, perfect. Now, what do we have? Well, um, because we're dealing with areas, right? We use the area density or surface density, as you know, is defined as mass divided by area. Also, because this is constant, we can use this relationship dm over dA, right? Correct. Now, um, what should be dm? Because we're looking for this element of mass equals to the total mass over area, correct? Times what? Times dA. Perfect. But what is this element of area? What is this area right here, right? Now, we, have, we know that the length, which is B, we need to find the thickness. It is because we are in the X direction, we call this, right, thickness dx, correct? So the area then is equals to B times dx, correct? And we plug this value right here. And what do we have? Okay, let's do it. Um, we have that the moment of inertia for this um, uh, area, surface, is equal to the unit of x squared, right, times dm. And what is dm? dm is, right here, is mass, right, over area, times dA, and dA is b, right, b times dx, right, dx. Correct? Okay, let's do it so it's equals to, uh, what is the limit? If this is x rotation, this is zero, right? Is um, the uh, symbol for that axis, that's the reference point, right? And now the distance from here to here is a over two, and from here to here is a over two, correct? Okay, perfect. So we have then the integral from, uh, right, negative a over two to a over two of what? mv over a x squared right dx. Correct. Perfect. And what do we have then? This is equal to m d right over a. Uh, correct. Let's do the inner. We're gonna be what x um, uh, cube right divided by three from negative a to b to a uh, um, from a divided by two negative from a divided by two positive. Got it? Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it right here. Okay, let's do it. This is the end, right? Correct. So then the moment of inertia becomes right uh, to what? M M B over three A, right? Times what? Times times um A divided by two cubed, right? Minus minus A divided by two cubed, correct? And this is equals to m right v a uh, cubed over over a uh, twelve over twelve. Correct. Uh, uh, we divide by area two. But what is the area of this surface? 
Well, the area is equal to area is equal to a b. All right. So this is equal to n v a cube over twelve a b. All right. And this is equal to this is equal to um, the total mass, right? A squared over twelve over twelve. Correct. So this is the moment of inertia for uh, this surface right through this a axis. Right? What about let's call it let's label this by a, right? It's like a by x, right, or y. What about in uh you see right uh this rotation in this way? Well, we get the same the same um formula, right? Because of uh, symmetry, correct? Through v is equals to m now gonna be v squared correct divided by by 12. The same the same procedure. Now how we can find the moment of inertia through z let's say we call this x and y now what should be the moment of inertia through z uh, in this way got it well we use the perpendicular axis theorem now what is given x and y moment of inertia we call it a and b how can we calculate right z this one well we just add those two moment of inertia okay let's do it and find right the moment of inertia through the central mass, right? Um, using the perpendicular axis theorem, well, in this way. Let's do it. So, what do we have? The total moment of inertia, the moment of inertia, right? Uh, to the center of mass using the perpendicular axis theorem, right? Is equals to, again, according to this uh, notation, moment of inertia through A plus moment of inertia through B. Correct? Perfect. This equals to um, m a squared over twelve, correct? Plus m v squared over twelve, right? And uh, this is equals to to um, well, it stays like that, right? It stays like this, correct? So this is again the uh, moment of inertia. What happens if a and b are the same for a square, right? For a square, for a square, right? For a square, the moment of inertia again through this uh, cell mass is equals to again these two are the same. A and b are the same, so gonna be uh, let's say m a square divided by six, right? For the square, correct? But in general, we have a rectangle going to be like that, right? And again, this is another way how we apply, right, the perpendicular axis theorem. Perfect. And with this, we finish this chapter, right? Um, uh, moment of inertia. Okay, I'll see you in the next uh, video. Bye.